Uh, meantime, we've got some breaking news we want to get to right this moment. Dom Chu's got that news, and it's on Nikola this morning. All right, Nikola shares are down about 4.5%, 1.3 million shares of volume. Nikola has now made a statement with regard to some of the allegations made by short-selling research for Hindenburg. Hindenburg Research. Hindenburg Research. Hindenburg Research. Hindenburg Research. There are two kinds of traders on Wall Street. Those who profit from greed and those who profit from fear. Such traders are known as short sellers. They make cash when stocks crash. The short selling firm Hindenburg Research specializes in shorting one kind of company, the criminal kind. They find their targets by looking for companies that have misled or lied to investors. They've wiped out over $100 billion of value from their bombshell findings. Just who is the puppet master behind Hindenburg Research? How did they come to wield so much power over the market? And are their motives as pure as they pretend to be? Or do they simply seek to profit from the chaos they create? It is March 2007 and Wall Street is booming. The stock market is at an all-time high. The housing market is soaring. It appears to be a great time to get into the financial sector. And that is exactly what Nathan Anderson does. Anderson is an unassuming young man who has recently graduated from university. He begins his career working at a financial data company. But Anderson isn't content. He wants to do more exciting work. On his own time, he begins begins digging deeper into company documents, looking for reasons why a company might be overvalued. In the process, he finds some really shady shit. This piques his interest and he dives deep down the rabbit hole. He finds that he has a true passion for investigating companies and uncovering crime. Originally, he isn't sure what to do about the frauds he uncovers, but he is driven by an internal sense of justice. He knows that he must act on the information he unearths. In that sense, he's almost like Batman. He finds some inspiration from a colleague named Harry Markopoulos. Markopoulos is best known as the man who put Bernie Madoff behind bars. Basically, Markopoulos is the Michael Jordan of fraud investigation. Anderson takes it a step further. He starts handing over his findings to the SEC in 2014, hoping to cash in on government bounties. He posts some of his findings on the finance website Seeking Alpha in an attempt to to sound more legit, he uses the name Hindenburg Research, an homage to the infamous Hindenburg airship in 1937. The designers of the Hindenburg ignored the fates of previous hydrogen airships. Likewise, corporate frauds convinced themselves this time is different when executing slimebag schemes. Anderson continues to report on suspected fraudulent companies and in 2016 teams up with Markopoulos. They submit a report on a hedge fund called Platinum Partners. Federal prosecutors charge seven alleged dirtbags with running a Ponzi scheme to swindle investors stores out of over one billion dollars. After years of uncovering corporate fraud, Anderson is ready to take his game to the next level. He believes that if he is going to turn his passion into a career, he will need to find a way to make money from his research. Although the SEC does offer cash rewards, it can take years to receive any money, if at all. Then it hits him. Why not look for publicly traded frauds and short their stock? This is known as activist short selling. Apple's under pressure. Uh, Yahoo down 8.5%, Cisco 6.5%, Research in Motion 10%. Activist short sellers bet against shady companies before dropping bombshell reports, exposing how they've swindled investors. What could possibly go wrong? Before we continue, cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some mind voodoo influenced by investors like Katie Wood or Bill Wang. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong, so instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. And the first time these guys sent their device to me, I personally loved 
of the high quality feel, how well weighted it is and it's fun to fidget with. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses all natural delicious flavors. They actually have some brand new exciting flavors out now too. Raspberry lemon, full bodied lemonade with a hint of berries and sparkling grapefruit, fresh and cooling fruity grapefruit. You get it. Instead of bad, fume is good. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash megalomedia or scan the QR code and use code megalomedia to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use megalomedia to save an additional 10% off on your order today. At this time in his career, Anderson is broke. He has a small trading account and he hasn't been doing too well financially. On top of that, he has a daughter to take care of. One morning in late 2017, Anderson makes his way to his computer and starts looking at potential ideas for his next report. Then he sees something that stops him in his tracks. It's a press release from a small biotech company called Bioptics. He would normally expect such a company to issue an overly optimistic take on upcoming drug trials, but what he sees looks like free money just waiting for him to walk over and pick it up. Bioptics announces it is changing its name to Riot Blockchain and is going to enter the Bitcoin mining business. As Anderson reads the article over, it seems like every other word is scam or fraud. He starts digging deeper into the company and uncovers even more questionable decision making. They have acquired a Bitcoin mining business for about 12 million dollars that has less than 2 million in mining equipment and has only been in business for a number of weeks. He also finds out that the largest shareholder is notorious for running illegal pump and dumps. The deeper he digs into this dumpster fire, the more his confidence grows. He has no doubt that this company is a scam. After weeks of research, he places a short position. He feels the weight of the world on his shoulders, but he also knows his research is bulletproof. On December 11, 2017, Anderson publishes his report on Riot blockchain. He can hardly believe what happens next. The stock rockets over 100% after he publishes his report and because he made a bet against the stock, the higher it climbs, the more money he loses. Dejected, he is forced to close his position before he ends up owing money to his broker. One comment under his report reads, Who cares if it's a scam? It's blockchain. It's going up. It's a painful lesson for the short seller. His future has never been more uncertain. He desperately needs a win. A stoic looking Anderson strides down a bustling midtown Manhattan street on his way to the WeWork office that is home to Hindenburg Research. His stony faced exterior hides the anxiety and fear underneath the surface. His debts are building. Recently his landlord filed a suit to evict him from his apartment that he shares with his girlfriend and daughter. He can't help but think about how he needs to succeed for the two of them. Hindenburg has been in business for just over a year, but Anderson has yet to make much money from his investigations. He needs this next report to pay. The weight of what he is about to do starts to sink in. If he is wrong, there is no one else to shoulder the blame. His last few reports don't make much of an impact, although one man is charged. The SEC isn't going to pay Anderson's rent anytime soon. The elevator doors close behind him and he closes his eyes to run the story over in his mind again. 
Afria, a Canadian wheat company, has made some questionable acquisitions. They use shareholder money to overpay for several companies that have ties to Afria executives. They purchased shares in the companies at extremely low prices before Afria ended up paying huge sums to acquire them. Essentially, Afria shareholders unknowingly paid inflated prices to buy companies the executives had stakes in. The scheme enriches the executives who walk away from the transaction millions of dollars richer. The elevator doors open and Anderson walks to his office. The fraud-busting Bateman looks over his work one last time. He's sure he has his facts in order, but he's still filled with caution. Now he must live with whatever happens. And what happens is exactly what he has been hoping for. Just like the original Hindenburg blimp, Afria shares go up in flames. The report tanks the stock by 30%. Anderson is hit by a tidal wave of relief. He is able to avoid total financial ruin. Well, half an hour ago, Hindenburg Research, which is one of the short sellers that published the research paper on December 3rd that uh, detailed numerous allegations on Afria's uh, transactions in Latin American um, um, assets. That really kicked off a lot of um, the turmoil surrounding Afria's shares. He wonders how many businesses out there have skeletons in their closets? And more importantly, how can I make money off them? After some success, Anderson is able to get the backing of a handful of investors who fund Hindenburg's operations. He also hires a small team of former analysts and journalists to join Hindenburg. Together, the group slowly starts to unravel the secrets that companies want to keep from the public. After a couple of years and several additional reports later, Hindenburg stumbles upon one of the biggest and boldest frauds in Wall Street history. A team of Nikola employees armed with a camera, a drone and deceit drive out to a long stretch of secluded road 50 miles outside of Salt Lake City, Utah. They are here to film a promo video for the company's hydrogen powered semi truck, the Nikola One. The video shows the truck barreling down the road at highway speed. It is the world's first hydrogen fuel cell powered semi truck. If it is true, it would be a revolutionary achievement. Cut to the year 2020. The hydrogen and electric vehicle company goes public on the Nasdaq. However, Nikola doesn't plan on going through the regulation heavy and time wasting process of a traditional IPO. Instead, they make use of a recent popular trend among companies looking to go public. They merge with a shell company that's already listed in order to speed up the process and avoid burdensome regulations. After all, regulations just make it harder to scam the public. Nikola found Founder Trevor Milton brands himself as somewhat of a discount store version of Elon Musk. And you're basically the next Elon Musk. As Nikola is coming into the public market, Milton begins to appear all over TV and on podcasts to promote his company. And he makes some rather bold statements. We have the most beautiful advanced semi trucks the world's ever built in history. Anderson, ever the skeptic, starts doing some digging into the claims Milton makes. He reaches out to an attorney he knows in Utah. It turns out he is representing three people who are preparing to give a whistleblower report on Nikola to the SEC. One of them is so obsessed with investigating Nikola that during the pandemic he turns his garage into a full-blown detective studio. Anderson knows that where there's smoke, there's fire, and he sees smoke pouring out of every pore of Milton's body. He just needs to find the fire. Slowly, the financial forensics team at Hindenburg starts to piece together the story of Nikola and its founder. They are shocked at what they discover. Hundreds of files, photos, phone calls and documents reveal the true extent of Milton's web of lies. While Tesla is higher today, Nikola shares are tumbling after a short seller called the company quote an intricate fraud built on dozens of lies. It isn't long before it becomes apparent to them that Nikola is one of the most brazen frauds ever. Their truck is not actually powered by hydrogen, but by pure gravity. What we can't see in their promo video is that the Nikola team tows the truck to the top of a hill and simply films it rolling down the road. He claims that they have been able to produce hydrogen at much lower costs than what was previously possible. If true, it would be a major breakthrough. Who could be responsible for such an achievement? 
Ireland, Nicola's director of hydrogen and infrastructure is none other than Trevor's brother, Travis. Before joining Nicola to revolutionize the world of hydrogen and transportation, Travis is pouring concrete as a subcontractor in Hawaii. Hardly the background one expects for someone responsible for cutting edge scientific research. On September 10th, 2020, Hindenburg releases their findings to the public, but Nicola hits back at Hindenburg. They release a response to Hindenburg's claims. Nicola claims that the Hindenburg report is nothing but market manipulation as Hindenburg stands to make a large profit by shorting Nicola's stock before releasing the report. And profit is exactly what Hindenburg does. Nicola shares fall 60% in the two weeks after Hindenburg releases the report. Hindenburg doesn't say just how much, but we can assume they make a healthy profit. It's Hindenburg's largest win yet. Their work on Nikola results in Milton being convicted of fraud and it puts Hindenburg on the map. Funny how a firm called Hindenburg set fire to a company claiming to be full of hydrogen, but it turns out they were just full of hot air. For most companies, finding one $30 billion fraud would be the score of a lifetime, but Anderson and the Silverback short sellers at Hindenburg are just getting started. Carl Icahn is an investor who made his name in the 80s, buying distressed companies and selling them for a profit. If the name Carl Icahn sounds familiar to you, it's probably because you remember our biography on him, which you can watch again here. He has been a well-known fixture on Wall Street for the better part of 40 years. He came to prominence as a corporate raider, forcefully taking over companies and scrapping them for a profit. And he has built a reputation as a force to be reckoned with. A large portion of Icon's wealth is connected to his holding company, Icon Enterprises or IEP. Hindenburg alleges that IEP, in addition to many other points they highlight, has been using money it receives from new investors to pay dividends to their old investors. Hindenburg report sends IEP stock down 20% on the day it's released. Within a matter of weeks, IEP plummets another 40%. How does Icon respond to the claims? Just like Nikola and Adani before him, Icon doesn't offer evidence to counter Hindenburg's claims, but instead simply calls Hindenburg out for trying to profit from their report. It's a bad move that does nothing to calm his fearful investors. Only time will tell when and if Icon is able to recover from this bear attack. Hindenburg is flying high after it's short on IEP. After taking down Icon, Anderson and his gang of Giga Chats have now become the most feared company on Wall Street. It's been nearly six years since Anderson started Hindenburg. His work has put people in jail. It's imploded the total value of dozens of stocks by well over $100 billion. It's pissed off hordes of billionaires and Robin Hood traders YOLOing their college tuition on meme stocks and it's made him a very comfortable living. Anderson believes he is simply doing the work he loves, stopping potential investors from getting involved in scams. Others see things differently. They claim that Hindenburg is profiting from fear-mongering, that he's motivated by greed and a desire to financially harm people, that his research is nothing more than market manipulation designed to attack companies purely for profit. Are Hindenburg's short reports self-serving? Yes. Do they make money by tanking companies they bet against? Yes, but it seems hard to argue that they don't have legitimate points in their reports about potentially nefarious business practices that are designed to fool the average investor. Hindenburg has helped uncover numerous frauds and their findings have led to the criminal convictions of a number of insiders. Should they not be financially rewarded for their work? Their reports are released for the public to scrutinize. If the hedge funds with the power to move markets believe there was nothing of substance to their claims, would we see such a dramatic reaction in these stocks? Surely we would stop hearing about Hindenburg if they weren't delivering the goods, but clearly they are. As their reputation continues to grow, so will the power they wield over the markets also grow. The only question left to ask about Hindenburg is, who's next?